guys welcome back to my youtube channel aka alexis in life in today's tutorial i am going to be teaching you how to make this rainbow loom daffodil um i do have one in white as well so if you do enjoy my tutorials please give this video a like comment below subscribe be sure to follow my tiktok and instagram be sure to check out my etsy shop and be sure to check out my amazon storefront as well anyway um let's get into the supplies needed to make this and the band count all right so to make the center part that is um, about 41 bands and then the petals um, each petal is roughly 14 bands and for all the petals um, that's roughly 70 bands altogether and then for the stem um, I don't have a band count for this stem because I did not count how many rows I did on these I just kind of made it as long as I wanted it to be um, so this the stem is up to your discretion um, so for the tutorial I'm gonna be making um, this one cuz I mean it is kind of like multicolored but you can do this one as well so you're just gonna need bands and then um i don't know what you plan on doing with your flower afterwards but i have a pipe cleaner in the stem so it doesn't just like fall apart i guess so that the pipe cleaner um it isn't necessary but um if you have it i think it would be a good idea because when you do the stem, um, that then, then it won't really matter how you put the stem on. Because, see this one, I put the stem on straight. And then, if, but if you decide, oh, I don't really like my flower straight. All you do is you bend the pipe cleaner and the flower just faces whatever direction you want it to. So I think that's really cool. Um, so, obviously, oh... You'll need a hook too and a stitch marker or c-clip um, no stuffing is required for this design so go ahead gather your supplies and then um, we will get started with the center part of our daffodil all right so to start our daffodil out um, I'm using mango I was just gonna do like the exact same colors of that one but I decided that would be a little lame if I did that so I was gonna switch it up a little bit so the first thing um, that we need to make is a magic ring of 10 if you don't know what a magic ring is I highly recommend watching a Lumi Gurumi like beginners video just so you can understand the basics so we're going to wrap a band around our hook three times like so then we are going to take one band pull that through like so and then we're going to hold on to our band we wrapped around and push the band over like so and we need to do that nine more times to so take a band pull it through but this time the only difference is you have three bands and you go through both loops on your hook going back through our wrapped band taking another band you know if you can grab a single band like so and that is three this is four
five. Six. Oops, six fell off. Six. Oh, there's a piece of um stuffing on my hook. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. And now you're going to take your C clip or stitch marker and put that on the band that is currently on your hook. And you just want to make sure that you have ten. Um, I know in most tutorials it's like, oh, you know, if you have one extra or one less, it doesn't matter. But um, for this one, it does matter. We make the petals directly on the thing that we're making now, so it has to be exact. Otherwise, you'll end up with a space, a random space between your petals. I don't know how many of you would want that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now um, we're just going to be using our yellow. And we are going to be going around making single crochets for two rounds. Um, I will do the first round with you on camera. So I'm just going to put in one single band in every loop we just created with our magic ring, like so. Pull it through, tuck it like that, and do that. <laughs> really bad at describing how um pulling pulling the back loops over the front loops like so honestly i guess i'll just do both rounds um both rounds on camera um i don't imagine that this tutorial is going to be like super duper long Okay, and then when you're going through, um, you still want to check to make sure that you have 10, otherwise you'll have like a random space like I do on that petal. So that was my first round. Oop, don't, don't drop your stuff. Well, I mean, I guess you can. It's my first round, so I'm going to add another band because this is going to be my second round of single crochets. So this is row three of singles, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you can grab it. Eight stuck on my finger, nine, and ten. Okay, so that was our third round of single crochet. Well, our second round of single crochets, since we can't count like our magic ring. Um, so now if you want to make this daffodil, um, we are going to switch to our orange color. Um, wonder what orange color would go. I'm just going to do this orange color since I already did like the lighter orange. And um, I don't know if you're like seeing um, a pattern with this um, pattern. But um, this is just going to be another 10 singles around just in your orange or yellow if you're making the white and yellow. So I guess there is a little bit of a different step here. Um, if you are doing the color change, um, 
you're going to want to do a color change and if you don't know what a color change is I will show you. You take your orange band and you pull it through everything on your hook like so and you pull the back loop over the front loop. It does create like an extra kind of loop. You're just not going to count that as a loop. So make sure you don't count that one as a loop because then you'll think you'll have 11 when you only have 10. And then continue to do your singles around like so. Nothing crazy about this pattern. Um, the only thing, uh, some people might find the petals kind of hard because you kind of have to, you kind of have to eye where you want to put your petals. Like there's no set way to put them per se. Okay, so it's my last single. You are going to want to do your last single and um, you're going to want to take your c-clip or stitch marker off and um, we are going to be tying this off so um, you don't want to go through you don't want to go through the first loop because that's like the fake loop we had for our color change and then you're going through the second loop but it's really the first loop pull a band through and tie that off um, I'm gonna hide that later I guess you you can hide it now if you want but um we'll be working on the back side for the petals so I'm not gonna hide that right now okay so now um, you're gonna want to switch to the color you used for yellow or I mean if um, if you want to do your petals a different color that's cool but um I looked up daffodils they're white and um, yellow or they have the yellow with this orange little center which I have going on right now so you're probably like what the heck is going on right now Alexis like this does not look like a flower um so we have to make the petals and um sorry there's a piece of hair um we have to make the petals and i have to look um at my other flowers because i didn't necessarily exactly say where i put the petals um i just said single crochet on the back of the round part so we got one two okay it looks like um, let me hold these together. One, two. Okay, so it looks like we got the one, two, and then they were, I put them in the next row. So I'm going to be shoving my hook here. Um, you don't have to put your petals exactly where I put them. Um, it really is based on your preference like it really depends like if you want the middle part to stick out less if you want the middle part to stick out less then you would probably want to go up a row but if you wanted to stick out more you would go further into the design like I am so the petals um they are pretty simple um, we're doing three single crochets so we're doing one. We're trying to keep them straight as best um, as your judgment can. Two and three. Now um, you're going to want to let that band off of your hook so you can flip it around like so. Um, and then we are just going to be doing um, three rounds up three single crochets. Um, I'm just going to show you all of them because I probably do them a little differently than what um, you're most likely used to doing. 
So you know this band on our hook is basically like not even there anymore. So we're doing one, like so, two, and then for our third one, let me finish the second one. For our third one, let me focus this because it's not focusing. So for our third one, we're going to want to go into this little stitch right here. Um, typically, you don't go into that stitch right there, but um, for this design, I use it. And I mean, it depends on the design, but most of the times I do like to go into that um, little stitch because sometimes I think it looks funny. But now you're going to do the same thing. You're going to flip your hook back. This is going to be our second row of three single crochets. This is one, two, and three. No funny business um, after we go through that little loop. And then um, our third, we're doing the same thing. Make sure you're flipping your hook around. Loop one, two, and we're going into this little tiny stitch. It doesn't really look like a stitch, but it is a stitch, I believe. It's a stitch in this design. Okay, now um, your petal should look something like that. Um, we will be doing a decrease single crochet. So you're just going to want to flip your hook around again. So starting with a decrease, just a little awkward for me at least. We're doing a decrease and then we're doing a single right here at the last, at our last stitch. And now, um, to get that point, to get our point, um, we, to quote unquote, close our petal, um, we will just be doing a decrease and then um, we'll be pulling everything on our hook and tying it off like so. And that is our first petal done. It's not too complicated, in my opinion. I want to know, like, where this little hair is coming from. Okay, so that is our first petal. Um, I will show you how to do um, another petal. Because as long as you have um, the ten stitches, um, you should, you will have to, like, overlap. So what I mean by overlapping is... Um, we you see how this petal ended here we're going to want to start here for our sec our second petal so you want them to overlap so we're doing our three singles so this is one two and three and you don't really need a stitch marker for this since um, we're working in such a small area. Flip your hook around and we're going to be doing those um, three single crochet rounds um, for three rounds. So we're doing one, two, and we are going into this one as well. It technically isn't like a real stitch, but I'm using it as a stitch for this design. This is our second row of three singles. After you get your stitch um, in that invisible one, everything should be okay because then you'll have your correct amount of three stitches, like so. Just going to continue our three singles until this is our third row. So, this will be our last um, single before we move on to do something different. 
to the last one the last stitch might be a little hard to see but it is it is definitely there now for our fourth row of the petal we will be doing a decrease single so yeah we will be starting off with a decrease like so pulling a band through and doing a single and then to close our petal we will be doing just a one decrease and then our petal will be completed pull your band through if you can <laughs> struggling and then tie it off like so and now you have two petals i am going to go let you make the three remaining petals on your own you can definitely rewind the video um, just make sure you're overlapping them. If you don't overlap them, you will not have enough space for the remaining three petals. Um, yeah, so I'm showing you again here that you make sure you go through there. And then um, I am just going to be quiet now and do the rest of the petals. So this is what my flower looks like um, after I have completed all five of the petals. Honestly, it blends in very well. You can't even really tell. Um, so now we're going to um, hide. You can hide all of our slip knot up bands. Um, just going to hide it like in the back of the bands. Like you can really hide it anywhere just hide them anywhere as long as you don't like um lose um the tip shape um it doesn't really matter like i mean like that's fine if you want i really i don't know <laughs> honestly i don't know how i got them super pointed like like that i was just like must have hid um these really well 
and like I don't plan on looking at the back of my flowers so like you don't even have to hide them like a crazy amount also um, my mic did die when I was still explaining the second petal so uh, I do apologize if that sounds weird um, I did a voiceover for it and you know when you film stuff and you're like oh I have no idea like the exact words that I said that's that's how it that's how it is with that it's rough out here um, this is my last one that I'm going to be hiding in the back. There's no specific order on how to hide these. Just hide them where you see fit. It's not really going to ruin. Um, see, like, I don't have them hidden, like, all the way, but you can hide them all the way if you want. Which, like, I just, um, I don't really plan on having my flower face um, towards the back for anything so and now I'm hiding the last um, stitch markers I might just pull out into the back okay yeah no no don't pull it so much out into the back but because it'll it kind of looks funny from the inside if you do that just hide it how you see fit um, you could probably hide it like this in these stitches if you want it to like so just like it kind of looks bad because you can t you can kind of tell that it's there but I'm just going to leave out there for now. Hide it however you want. Um, pull it back inside maybe. Okay, yeah, it looks better if you take it back inside, I guess. Okay, enough with my babbling. Um, so we're going to want to turn your flower um, around to the back and grab your green bands for the stem. The stem is really simple um now you can make it however long or however short you want so that's why i don't have like a band count for this um it just really depends how you want the stem to be you can put it directly on the center of like the capping band but your flower your flower will look like this and then this one, I still think I put it directly um, on, but I think I tied I tied a band to this. So, however, wherever you want to put your stem, fine with me. Um, is there anything too crazy? So, um, our stem is going to be four singles on the back of our flower so we do have 10 um you can make your stem if you wanted to make it bigger you can but i didn't really want to make it any bigger so just go anywhere you really see fit for the stem um doesn't matter that much because once once you get started on it, um, it isn't really anything crazy. So for the stem, you can just do as many rows as you want until it gets to your length that you desire. Um, so I'm just probably going to do it a little bit longer. Um, so for the stem, you don't actually... You don't go into this little first stitch, that's like the fake stitch. And then one, two, three, and four. You don't really need um, 
a stitch marker for this either. Um, but if you do, if you are planning on using um, a pipe cleaner, it would be um, easier to see your four stitches if you shove that in the middle. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my pipe cleaner. So here is my pipe cleaner. You're gonna wanna find the middle. I'm gonna take my hook out while doing that. Um, it is pretty difficult because it is only four stitches, but um, you can kind of pull it um, into the more the center of your flower too while you're doing this. Um, so yeah, you can do as many rows as you want for your um, desired length of the stem. Um, having the pipe cleaner just makes your flower, um, you know, it makes it more stable. Like if you want to put it in like a cup or a vase or something. So that is why um, I like the pipe cleaner. Um, and it easily helps you, shows you where your stitches are for when you're doing the stem. Um, I'm going to take my stitch marker out because I'm not counting, I'm not counting my rows. For the stem but um yeah I will come back when my stem is completed and also um you know you just play around with your petals to have them sit a certain way that you want them to sit obviously but you know flowers are all are not all created equal so yeah so once you get to your desired length of your stem, if you did use um, a pipe cleaner, you're just going to want to cut it. And then um, to close your stem, oops, we are just going to be doing um, decreases all the way around until you do not see a hole anymore, which honestly it's like two decreases. So, yeah, I don't see a hole anymore, so I will be closing mine off right, oop, right here. And then, um, you can just hide this, um, your tie-off band into your stem. Oop. It doesn't slip away for me now. Mine keeps doing. Okay, cool. And now this is what um your daffodil should look like, basically. Um, if you don't like how your petals are sitting, um, you're just gonna have to play around with them to get them how you desire. Or the thing that could be making them not sit how you like it um could be something to do with your tie off band so playing around with that um will really you know affect your shape of your petals and whatnot um but yeah i hope you guys um enjoyed this tutorial um if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below i will definitely get back to you and um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed please leave me a like comment below subscribe be sure to follow my tiktok and instagram be sure to check out my etsy shop and be sure to check out my amazon storefront I will see you all in my next tutorial. Bye!